Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, uh, this, I'm going to talk about Zether today towards privacy in a smart contract world. And this is joint work with uh, Shashank, Mahdi, and uh, Dan. And Shashank was uh, going to give the talk, but unfortunately couldn't make it on short notice. So please excuse me if, if the slides aren't uh, perfectly polished. So um, I want to talk about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, or more generally about different types of transactions and different ways to implement a, a transactional system. So the way that, that, that Bitcoin and, and many other currencies, and especially the privacy uh, currencies like Monero and Zcash implement um, transactions, are using a so-called UTXO paradigm. So the way to think of it is that uh, every transaction has some inputs and outputs and these outputs then, the, 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 the next transaction then needs to refer back to outputs of a previous transaction. So that's, uh, and you can only spend an output twice and you need to spend it in full. So if, if the input is, uh, you know, I don't know, that's like two, then uh, the output also needs to uh, totally spend the two. So if I want to, you know, if I have, a, if I have a 10 Bitcoin, for example, and I only want to send two of them away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new address, a change address, and, and send, you know, two address to the, two Bitcoin to the destination and eight away. And accounts work differently where every public key has a balance and then you simply add and subtract money from that account. So if I send from one account to another account, then I will, uh, you know, say, I, again, I have uh, 10 Bitcoin and, and 10 Ether now in my account. This is what Ethereum uses. And then I will um, uh, subtract two Bitcoin from my account and send two Bitcoin, uh, two Ether, Ether, sorry, to the other account. And um, the, the validity conditions of these systems are different. So the validity condition of, of Bitcoin is that the, it's valid if the sum of the inputs is greater or equal than the sum of the outputs. And uh, Ethereum is uh, valid if the amount that is being sent is less than or equal than the amount that is in the account currently. So you can already see that, that Ethereum is, uh, you know, the, this, this check is sort of stateful. So you need to know what the state of, of the, um, well, in fact, both are stateful. But the, in Ethereum, you need to know what is the, 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 the amount that is currently in the account. And in Bitcoin, uh, you need to know what, um, whether the UTXO has been spent before or not. Um, and a very nice way to think about it is that Bitcoin is much more like cash, where I cannot spend you know, half a $10 bill. I can only spend the full $10 bill and then get some change back. Um, and accounts are much more like my bank account, where I don't necessarily know, for example, you know, if I'm spending you know, uh, $30 from my bank account, I don't know which $30 I'm spending. You know? It's not the bill that I've received from some previous transaction. That is different in cash, right? Every bill has sort of a, a history, the, the hands that it exchanged. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, the, um, and so it turns out that I, I won't go into too much of the differences because of time, but it turns out that accounts are um, more suitable for smart contract based systems where the smart contract sort of naturally has a state, you know, a, a large state which represents the, the, the amount of data that is stored at that account. And accounts can't really, because the smart contract really has a fixed address, it has a fixed public key, and it can't really create new addresses on the fly um, versus users in the, in the uh, Bitcoin system where you only have users transacting, they can create new addresses and new public keys all the time. Um, and there's more fundamental reasons for it. Another nice benefit of accounts is that the, uh, it sort of compresses the state a little bit, right? So, so if I have, you know, if I get a million transactions, each worth, you know, one hundredth of a cent, then uh, in Bitcoin, that takes a lot of space to represent, whereas in Ethereum or in an account-based system, you know, this only takes uh, a few bits to represent. Um, so the, the, but then again, on the other hand, like, I, I wouldn't say that one is better than the other, because on the other hand, you know, processing accounts, again, 
requires is, is has this sort of stateful thing where I need to know what is the current state of the account, and we will actually see uh, later on. So, for example, I'd, you know, if there's multiple transactions in parallel that want to withdraw from the same account, that sort of creates problems. So we will see how this uh, becomes a bigger problem if we add zero knowledge to it. So uh, the other thing that I quickly want to say, just in terms of uh, terminology, I, I'll use the words confidentiality and anonymity. And in general, when I uh, refer to confidentiality for transactions, I refer to the amount that is being transferred. Um, and anonymity are the details of the transaction. And anonymity is more the who is transferring to whom. Um, so it turns out that Bitcoin is neither confidential nor anonymous. And this shouldn't be a surprise to most people that are here. But basically, even though I can not necessarily see who the person is, there's some pseudonymity here. I can exactly see the amounts. I can see who is sending to whom. And it turns out that Ethereum isn't really any better. And, and, and maybe it's even worse because uh, you know, every account has exactly one user. So if I know your account, right, if I've ever sent you any money, then I can exactly track all of your transactions. So um, the, yeah, here, highlighted. So we want to do something better. And I'll, I'll quickly go over to uh, uh, cryptographic building blocks that we'll be using. So one thing that we're going to use is, is a, a commitment. Um, and the commitment simply has, has two properties. One is that if I commit to a value, um, you cannot distinguish it from a commitment to a different value. And uh, the other thing is that it will be hard for me to, if I commit it to rock, I will only be able to open it to rock afterwards. And um, there, there's, uh, and in particular, we're going to use um, homomorphic commitments or that uh, where you, I can also add two commitments to get a commitment to the sum. So the other tool that we're using is, is the one that uh, we've talked about today a lot, so zero knowledge proofs. And you know, you know that there's different kinds of zero knowledge proof. One that might be interesting for us is that I can prove to you that a commitment is, is sort of in a small range. But um, so using these building blocks, we can create something called a confidential transaction. So the idea is that I replace every amount with a commitment to the amount. And then I, uh, the question is, how do I check that the transaction is valid? Right? How do I check that the sum of the outputs is equal to the sum of the inputs, or modulus some fees? Well, it, it turns out that I can simply use a zero knowledge proof to, to prove to you that this condition still holds. And, um, so now the idea is that with a confidential transaction, you cannot no longer anymore, only the, the, uh, the sender knows the amounts that are being transferred. And the receiver needs to actually receive the opening of the commitment to know how much money she got. So um, the, co these confidential transactions, they're, they're compatible with Bitcoin. They're actually deployed in, in multiple systems uh, today, you know, like uh, the, these Mimblewimble based systems or Monero, and um, they don't really by itself hide the transaction graph. So they give you some confidentiality, but not really anonymity. So you can still see who is transacting with whom. So we um, developed Ether, which at its simple level is, is uh, one thing that it provides is confidential transactions for Ethereum. And, and uh, it also provides some more things. Um, but the nice thing is that it's uh, simply a smart contract which you could deploy on top of Ethereum. The techniques apply to generally account-based systems. Um, and you know, we, we implemented it with, uh, it doesn't have a trusted f a setup. And, and we made uh, you know, uh, a lot of um, changes to make it um, very efficient. And there were several challenges that came up which I will talk about uh, once you try to have confidentiality in an account-based system. So we have all of these, these, these functionalities, these simple functionalities. Mo mainly there, I can create, you know, convert Ether to Zether by just uh, calling a function in the smart contract. I can then, again, burn it. Um, and I can also transfer money between users. And uh, I'll talk about the other functionalities a little bit later. So 
let's think of a you know straw man design for Zether. So you know I just do the same thing as I did with 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 uh, UTXO. So I just commit to all of the balances you know in the smart contract, which which keeps this math uh, mapping. And then you know Alice wants to send some money, and so she she. Um, calls the smart co contract, tells it to, to remove some money from the commitment and add it to, to Bob's commitment, which is easy to do if we use these homomorphic commitments, and she adds a proof that everything is correct. So, um, you know, this seems to work nicely. The problem is this is completely broken. So why is this broken? Well, ah, okay. Now Bob comes along and uh, wants to, you know, do something with its ether. It wants to burn it. It wants to so it transfer it back to ether. The problem is, what if Alice didn't tell it what tell Bob what RT is? How does Bob know what RT is? So um, what is and what is RT? Sorry, this is the randomness. This is the new randomness that was added to uh, the commitment. And the problem is with these commitments, you need to know the randomness in order to do anything with them. That is actually one of the key properties of them, because they're supposed to hide the amount that I own them. So if Alice could be nice and tell Bob you know, what the randomness is, but what if Alice doesn't do that? What if Alice is sort of you know, being uh, annoying and, and just sending money to, to another account, making it completely impossible to spend money from this account, make it impossible to spend money from this account. So this is, uh, this is uh, completely unusable, because a malicious user can make it um, hard for, for, for any receiver to, to spend the money. And here, the, the, why is this a problem in the account model here, but not in the UTXO model? Well, if I send you a transaction in the UTXO model, which you cannot spend, well, then you will just simply ignore it. It's as if you haven't received the money. However, if the, the state gets compressed in these accounts, then suddenly this new randomness affects all of your old state. So. Um, how can we solve this? Well, instead of commitments, we're going to use encryptions. And I'm not going to go into detail, but basically we can use these, these Algamal encryptions and the exponent, which are also uh, have some homomorphic properties. Um, and uh, then Alice needs to prove that basically, you know, this, she with, is subtracting the same number money from uh, her account that she's adding to Bob's account, and that you know all of these encryptions are valid. And then when Bob comes along, uh, he can decrypt using his secret key the amounts that are being transferred. So, uh, and the smart contract just checks that the transfer is okay, and and now Bob will always be able to um, uh, to to decrypt his own um, uh, amount and be able to spend it. So this this sort of poisoning attack doesn't apply anymore. So um, let's go back to the, 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 the overview. So this is just uh, now I know how to transfer money. But what if I don't want to, oh, yeah. So how do we um, do these zero knowledge proofs? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a variation of bulletproofs because um, basically opening a, I can open a commitment. I can, I can prove to you, you know, this, this commitment is some value. Opening an encryption is, uh, is, is harder. So for example, for Algamal, I cannot, you know, if I just uh, non-detectively open it, uh, it would require giving you the secret key, which is something that I wouldn't want to do because I want to use the encryption later. So basically, I can need to use so-called Sigma protocols to open the Algamal encryption. And we uh, did a slight modification to bulletproofs, which allows us to combine these Sigma protocols efficiently with bulletproofs, and we call it Sigma bullets. So what if I care about anonymity? So I'll go into this later. It turns out I cannot get the same level of anonymity that I could, for example, get in Zcash. But I can get some anonymity by basically saying uh, that, you know, say I am Alice and I want to send money to Bob, but I can hide myself amongst a group of people. So um, one, uh, what this proof will do is it will say that one party here, so I, I indicate a, a ring of people, you know, say like five people, and then the, the proof will basically, the only thing that it will leak is that one person in this group has paid one other person in this group, an undisclosed amount. And uh, basically I just encrypt, you know, the amount that I want to send under both the receiver and the negative under the uh, sender, 
and, and all the other amounts are being uh, zero, and I give you a, a zero knowledge proof that um, I'm, I'm sending from exactly the account uh, where I know the private key. And this is again uh, combining bullet proofs with, uh, with uh, you know, a one out of many proof. Um, and, and again, we can take advantage of the, the sigma bullets combination. So, you know, the, the, we said that, you know, this, this, this confidential transaction, the whole title of the, the paper in the talk is, is, you know, towards privacy in the smart contract world. But so far, we only have this, this smart contract, which can, you know, where we can send money uh, confidentially from A to B that isn't terribly exciting yet, right? What we really would want is have some interaction of this confidential money with other smart contracts. So how can a smart contract use confidential uh, amounts. The problem is this seems fundamentally a little bit challenging because uh, zero knowledge proofs and, and privacy in general requires secret state. Smart contracts are public functions. They don't have any secret state whatsoever. So how can a smart contract send money on its own? So um, the other problem is that we could, you know, Sometimes uh, the smart contract's functionality is, you know, it's, it's guaranteed that, you know, a transfer is correct, you know. Um, it, it, we, we can guarantee, you know, maybe the smart contract uh, is, is such that it, um, it uh, basically will never send, you know, a, a, a false amount. So the problem is we don't want to trust that. We want our Zether smart contract to be modular and not depend on all of the other smart contracts, right? And these smart contracts could be malicious, and we have to prevent, you know, uh, what if a, you know, what if a smart contract is is, is malicious and and could, uh, you know, send send um, uh, transactions which are evil. So uh, how can we do that? Well, the solution is that we're going to lock the account to a smart contract such that. The smart contract basically gets to say, you know, when is money being transferred from A to B. So, I'll, 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 um, so smart contracts, the smart contract which the amount is locked to, is think of an auction smart contract, will um, basically have to give permission for the money to be sent away or be transferred or something. So, if I bid in an auction, the auction smart uh, contract now has control of this money. So I cannot like suddenly bid in an auction and then move my money away. That would be also a terrible outcome and would make things uh, impractical. So, um, but every trans Zether transaction still has to have a proof, you know, that the transaction is in fact valid, that there's no money created out of thin air. So, as I said, Alice can lock her account to, to Zether and then even um, if, uh, Alice wants to send that money away, she cannot do that without, uh, before the auction maybe has finished. And so Alice needs to first talk to the auction contract, get permission from the auction contract, and then uh, the money can be transferred. So, um, and the same, you know, goes with unlocking, you know, only the, once the auction is finished, the Alice can um, run the, can unlock her money. So this isn't actually, you know, Alice can, the important thing is that Alice can, uh, um, and before ex ante, evaluate the auction contract. The whole functionality is public, so Alice has to trust the smart contract to only do, you know, things that she agrees with or uh, implement rules that she agrees with. Otherwise, she shouldn't lock her money to the account. So this seems, you know, even this, this, this sort of, uh, you know, simple locking and unlocking design gives us a, a lot of applications. So for example, the, the, well, the most uh, simple one is, is, is anonymous and, and confidential transfer of value um, without, you know, without having to have uh, this UTXO set, which can grow and grow and grow. Um, because uh, this is another sm small thing, is that in, in, in Zcash and Monero and all the other uh, systems which have anonymous transfer, I need to keep around these so-called nullifiers, which prevent double spending. It turns out in, in our account-based design, this is not the case. So you don't have to have a state which is growing and growing, even uh, for the number of transactions. Another thing is that I can have auctions without collateral and perfect, uh, with perfect bid privacy. So the problem is right now if I want to implement an auction in, in Ethereum, I need to commit to the amount that I'm going to bid and then send a very, very large collateral, which is hopefully larger than my bid. 
Um, the problem is that you know, this, this already revealed some information about my bid. It revealed an upper bound. And with Zether, I can just do my bids in Zether so they don't reveal at all what my bid amount is. And then after the auction has concluded, or after the, the bidding phase has concluded, everybody just you know, opens their bid or, or proves that their bid is higher than the current highest bid or something like that. And um, so we can implement auctions without any uh, collateral. Uh, I can do confidential payment channels. I won't go into that. And I can also do stake voting, where um, I vote on a proposal, and I vote, my vote is proportional to the amount of stake I have. And uh, actually, the only thing that gets leaked in this protocol is the, the I think, the total number of votes on the winning, uh, yeah, the total number of votes on the winning uh, thing, the winning, winning, I don't know. Um, so, and uh, we can also do some sort of confidential proof of stake. So, uh, are we done yet? Well, no, unfortunately, it turns out not. Uh, so, there were some problems with this account based system, which I quickly want to go into. So, say Alice wants to uh, transfer money from, to Bob, but you know, then there's these, these, these flash boys, the, the high frequency traders, which are actually very nice, and they want to send some money to Alice. So now Alice, uh, the transfer to Alice is valid. The smart contract uh, processes the, the, the transfer from the Flash Boys. And then the problem is, if you think about it, the state of the account changes. But Alice's proof is with respect to the, uh, it has to be created with respect to the current account state that she knows. So if the transaction comes through faster than her transaction gets accepted, and this is her simply receiving money, this doesn't even have to be malicious, and suddenly her transfer will get rejected, and she can keep getting dosed without being able to, to, to send her money. Right? If this is like a popular account which is constantly receiving money, that account can never ever pay out. Um, so this doesn't really work. So, um, and the reason is again, right? in, in the UTXO model, the state doesn't really change unless you, the owner itself changes it. But here, the state even changes when you receive um, transactions. So um, I'll uh, quickly go over the solution. So the solution is that we, we have a sort of a temporary and a stable account. So you have a temporary account where you receive sort of uh, where you collect the, the incoming money that you receive or the, the incoming um, uh, changes to your account. And then you have the stable account which is uh, the, the account uh, with which you, do your, you, you write your proofs with respect to that stable account. And then every, you know, every so often, um, so you write the, you, know, you, you transfer your money from the stable account, but you only update the temporary accounts, especially of the receiver. And um, the idea is that then every, every so often, um, the, you roll over the, the temporary account, and this gets done automatically in our implementations so every, you know, every couple blocks. The temporary account gets rolled over into the stable account. So, um, and this is especially problematic in the anonymous transfer, which touches multiple accounts. And there we have to deal with tr uh, double spending, but I'll, I'll have to skip over that and, um, yeah. Uh, so the, 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 well, I guess, sorry, I'll, 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 I won't skip over it. So the, the idea for the, the, so the problem is in, in these anonymous transfers, a lot of accounts are touched. And, and you know, I can, as a, as a random person, I, I can include you in my anonymity set. And uh, if we only constantly keep the temporary accounts, how can we, res uh, how can we detect double spending? How can we make sure that no single time the same account is actually doing uh, the same transfer, right? Because now suddenly there can be two rings, you know, two people can be transferring money, and there can be an intersection between the rings because they use the same anonymity set. But uh, we have to somehow make sure, without like giving up any privacy, that no single person, uh, that not the same person is actually sending money twice from that ring. So what we do is sort of a, a, a Monero Zcash style solution where I commit to my, I use a deterministic uh, hash, I use a hash function, basically I hash my private key and, and give you a proof that you know, this hash of the private key is correct. 
And then um, this, this nonce does not leak my private key. I can prove that it doesn't leak my private key. But basically, if I try to spend twice, then my, this, the same nonce will appear. And um, the good thing is, because we use this rollover and we use these, these periods, basically every, every time I roll over, I can delete this set of, of nonces and, and use a new one. So I don't have this ever-growing state like in Monero or Zcash. Um, can we get Zcash, this leads me to the next question, um, which is can I get Zcash, uh, well actually, turns out you can't get Zcash uh, level of anonymity, um, but I'll have to skip over this. We implemented this uh, as an Ethereum smart contract and are able to sort of, you know, fit it into the block size limit or a transaction cost. I mean, I don't know how much it is today because, you know, I made, uh, th this n these numbers constantly change, but it costs them maybe the order of a dollar. Um, and uh, the cryptography, implementing cryptography on Ethereum is, is obviously quite expensive, and I think the next talk will be sort of about that. Um, and, but there would be small changes to Ethereum that could uh, drastically reduce the cost. So, um, yeah, we, we um, have confidential and anonymous transaction for Ethereum, which, which really apply to general account-based models. So there's, I think, seven out of the top 10 cryptocurrencies use this account-based model, so there's actually use cases for it. And uh, we developed some new, uh, an adaptation to bulletproofs called Sigma Bullets and, and show that this has many interesting applications. So yeah, thank you very much.